the bell icon to turn on notifications. In large meetings or training sessions, it can be difficult to create meaningful connections or facilitate group discussion, activities and exercises. However, a recent update has seen breakout room functionality added into Microsoft Teams. Breakout rooms allow meeting organizers to divide meeting participants into subgroups or rooms. The meeting organizer can create up to 50 breakout rooms and automatically or manually assign participants into rooms. And breakout rooms can be started from a Teams meeting or in a channel. The meeting organizer has control over all of the breakout room settings so they can choose to allow participants to come back to the main meeting and then return to the assigned breakout room. So this is helpful if a participant has a question or needs to clarify something as it doesn't disturb the discussion in the breakout room. The meeting organizer can create, rename and delete rooms as needed. And once the breakout rooms are open, the meeting organizer can move participants around and join any of the breakout sessions. Participants can then be recalled back to the main meeting at any time and the organizer can post broadcast messages or announcements to all rooms. It's also worth noting that any files or whiteboards shared in the breakout rooms will be available in the main meeting chat once all participants are back together. So with all that said, let's jump into Teams and take a look at how we can create breakout rooms. So I've started an ad hoc meeting and I've invited a couple of my colleagues, Adriana and Jennifer, into this meeting. And I can see that they're both sitting there waiting in the lobby. So let's accept them by clicking on the tick. So now that a couple of other people have joined, let's take a look at how we would create breakout rooms. So if we go up to our menu running across the top where we have all these different icons, the fourth one from the left is breakout rooms. So let's click to select. So this is where I can set up what my room settings are and how I want to assign my participants. So first I need to specify how many rooms I want to create. So I'm going to create two breakout rooms. I can then choose how I want to assign participants to rooms. So I can get Microsoft Teams to do this automatically for me. So it's just going to randomly assign my participants into two different rooms. Or if I want to be a little bit more detailed and a bit more specific about who goes into what room, I can choose to assign people manually. And this is the one that I'm going to check in this example. Click on Create Rooms at the bottom. This can take a couple of seconds but you should see in the pane on the right hand side, I now have two rooms with the generic names, room one and room two. Currently both rooms are empty and both rooms are closed. Now, before I start assigning my participants to these rooms, I'm going to rename them to make them a little bit more meaningful. So if I hover over room number one and click on the three dots or the ellipses to jump into more options, you can see in the pop-out menu, I get a menu item that says rename room. So I'm just going to call this uh, Team A and select Rename. And I'm going to do exactly the same for room number two. We're going to rename and call this Team B. Rename room. I'm now going to assign my participants to these rooms. Now, this is just a training example. In real life, you'd probably have a lot more participants on your call. I've only got two people, so I'm just going to have one person in each room. In the real world, you probably wouldn't want to put one person all on their own in one room, or maybe you might do if they need to do an individual exercise. But let's take a look at how we assign because it works the same way no matter how many participants you have. So because I've selected to assign manually, I can click on the Assign Participants pane at the top. It's going to list out all of the participants and I can select the first one and click on Assign and I'll get a drop down menu to select a room to assign them to. So let's assign Jennifer to the Team A room. As soon as I do that, you can now see that her name populates underneath that room. And if I click the expand arrow, I can see her sitting just there. And let's assign Adriana and let's put her in the Team B room. So now I have one person in each room. Now, if maybe I decide at some point I want to move Adriana into the same room as Jennifer, I can definitely do that as well. So you can move participants around. So let's expand. All I would need to do is select Adriana click on Assign, and then I can choose Team A. And now I have two participants in the Team A room, and the Team B room is currently empty. 
Now, I'm actually going to pull Adriana back into the room she was originally in. Now, as the meeting organizer, you can also add additional rooms or delete breakout rooms on the fly. So if I now decide that I need a room for Team C, I can click the Add Room button. I get room number three, and of course I can then go in and rename that room. If I want to do the reverse of that and maybe delete a room that I've accidentally added or a room that I don't need anymore, if I just hover over the room and click on the three dots, I have a delete room option in that contextual menu. Once you've created your breakout rooms, I would suggest that you take a quick look at the breakout room settings. And there aren't many of them, there's just two options in here. So if you take a look at where it says breakout rooms at the top, if we click the three dots, you can see that we have a room settings option. And currently I have automatically moved participants to rooms toggled on, but I have participants can return to the main meeting toggled off. Now I always like to have this toggled on. Because what this means is that when I have participants in separate rooms, maybe they're doing some kind of exercise. If a participant wants to quickly return back to the main meeting and maybe ask me a question or clarify something, I want them to be able to do that with minimal fuss. So toggling that option on is going to allow them to do that. Now, one thing you might notice is that both of my breakout rooms are currently closed. And that's worth noting, the breakout rooms aren't functional until you as the organizer open them. You can open individual rooms or you can open all of the breakout rooms at the same time. So if I just wanted to open the Team A breakout room, if I click the three dots, I have an option in here to open the room. However, in this case, I want to open all of the rooms. So all I need to do is click on the Start Rooms button. You can see that they're opening and they do take a couple of seconds. And once they're open, you're going to get that green open message on the right hand side. So now the participants are in their breakout rooms, they can start having group discussion or maybe doing an exercise. Now, if you're the meeting organizer and you want to maybe jump into a specific room and join in the conversation, you can do that at any point. So if I decide that I want to have a word with Jennifer in the Team A breakout room, if I hover over Team A and click on the three dots, I have an option to join the room. You can see that this opens up another Teams window. It's headed up Team A, and I am now essentially in the room with Jennifer. And if I show the participants pane, you can see there we both are. We can do our exercise. We can have a conversation. And then when I'm ready to leave the room, I can just click on leave and that's gonna pull me back into the main meeting. Now, something else that you can do as an organizer, which is pretty cool, is that you can send a broadcast announcement to all rooms. So maybe participants are in those rooms doing some kind of exercise, and you want to let them know that they have two minutes left to finish up the exercise, and then you want them to return to the main meeting. Well, I could send a broadcast message out to all of the rooms in one go. So again, right at the top here in the title bar, I'm gonna click the three dots and choose the make an announcement option. I'm just gonna say, please finish up in two minutes. I'm gonna send that message out, and now everybody is gonna get a notification that I've sent that message through. Now, once you've finished using the breakout room, so maybe the exercise or the discussion you wanted them to have is now over, you can send a broadcast message asking people to come back to the main meeting. And if you have that setting toggled on in your room settings, it's gonna allow people to come back under their own speed. But if you want to just close the rooms, which will essentially boot everybody out of their individual breakout rooms and pull them back into the main meeting, then you can do that as well. So once again, you can close individual rooms by hovering over and selecting the option from the contextual menu. But if you want to close all rooms, you do have a close rooms button just here. Those rooms are gonna close and everyone's gonna come back to the main meeting window. So the way I like to think about breakout rooms is imagine having maybe four different meeting rooms and then the main office. You might all meet in the main office and then go off in groups into the separate meeting rooms to work on something and then come back to the main area when you're done. That's pretty much the equivalent of breakout rooms. As you can see there, they are super simple to manage. So I definitely encourage you to have a little play around with these, have a little experiment because they really can be helpful when it comes to facilitating large meetings. That's it for this video tutorial. I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. 
To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.